Beer uh, Southwick. I'm a naturopath and uh, dietitian and a herbalist. And of course, I support uh, uh, fair labeling and, uh, and I'm against, of course, genetically modified foods in any manner, any pesticides. People don't really sometimes understand what harm is being done to their body on a long term basis by consuming these, these uh, uh, foreign uh, substances to our body. But we all need to be aware of what we're eating and have free choice. Thank you. Well, I have my own Your turn. But, Labeling GMOs is very, very important. So please, I'm begging all of you to do something about it, not only for yourself, but all the other families of the world, your children. You don't want your children to grow up eating that horrible stuff in their little tummy. No. So make sure that you buy of the, the food that's labeled GMA, GMO, oh. and say and vote yes on uh, Proposition 37. Okay? Okay. I'm Giles, and I'm here today, Saturday, November 22nd, uh, exposing the public to the idea that a lot of us do care whether we have labels on our genetically modified food or not. And incidentally, I just came from a, a new um, digestion class at uh, Adult Ed City College, and I learned that nutrition is the foundational uh, cause, the basic cause of all diseases. You can trace them all back to nutrition. And at our film on Thursday night, I learned that, uh, what's that pesticide they put on us? They put on uh, Roundup. The Roundup is, uh, for, coats the plants and everything that we eat or uh, robs us of the nutritional availability of the plants that we eat. So there's a hundred reasons for getting labels on our genetically modified food. Choice! I mean just a human right to choose what you eat. I am so tired of Monsanto trying to pull the wool over our eyes and assuming by default that we're stupid and we don't know what they're doing. So I'm just out here finally. This is my first action as an activist and this is the thing that's really gotten my dander up so here i am and vote yes on 37 please and tell all your friends because it's a consumer driven thing against the 25 million dollars that monsanto has to spend on television ads. so please tell all your friends in santa barbara on state nana Padua on september 22nd and i'm interviewing the famous Patricia Bragg, the daughter of the one and only Bragg's natural vitamin or natural uh, um, apple, cider apple cider vinegar. In the Bragg liquid aminos, my dad was the originator of pill food stores. And you know, in the early days, they used to laugh at my dad when he said, Dad said, Listen, the Bragg healthy lifestyle, you are what you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, what you think, what you say and do. I tell you, it's pretty noisy here in Santa Barbara on State Street. But you know, they say that man brags crazy. You can eat anything you want, drink anything you want. But we are now here protesting GMO foods. And we want to demand if a product has GMO on it, we want to put on the label. And that's why we want all of you to vote. Here yes. it is. Proposition yes, on 37. 37. Yes, yes, on 37. So Patricia, what is your opinion on what the American people can do to stop this genocide of our food source? Well, I, I believe that we can ban cars. We can ban the foods. Ban them. But we have to know, and that's why I demand that they put it on the label if it has GMO in it. Okay, you thank see? you. Yes, thank and you. And that way we will be able to do anything and we will demand a pretty soon Monsanto will be out of it. And then so if it says 
non-GMO, it's good to buy. If it doesn't have that non-GMO label, do not buy it because our power is with our dot dollar. The moment we realize that we can put the bad companies out of business by not buying their product. So we're looking for a label that says non-GMO. Well, by the way, I want to say that my father started Raglan Put Aminos over 80 years ago. Wow. And it's, it's, we produce it from certified non-GMO soybeans. And I'm very proud of that. That is a, that is a feat yeah. because the I soy is the most highly pesticide crop in the world. So yes, that's, yes. And you know, I, I feel ageless. I really do. <laughs> and you look ageless. And I've been nutritionist at Clint Eastwood for 55 years. <laughs> and I've had the Beach Boys for over, I guess, 45 now. So Congratulations. The, the, the years roll on and I get younger. Yes, she does. And I, I don't eat GMO food. You no, know, but it's hard. It's hard. We need to demand that our restaurants carry non-GMO, we need to be proactive as American people and care about the health effects it has on our children. Yes. If you don't care about yourself, at least care about your children and your grandchildren because they are all the ADD, the ADHD, the autism we're seeing, it's all highly scientifically proven attributed to GMO foods, which means genetic alteration. Yes. I mean, who wants that? Yeah, and, and, and yes, the disease is on the uprise, cancer and autism, it, it's very sad. And it's all due, we are what we eat and drink. And just remember, what you eat, drink, watch and talk tomorrow, it's your chemistry becomes you. And that's why we demand, we want to know foods that have our GMOs. And so this bill has to pass. Here it is. California Proposition 37, and if it passes, wow, California will lead the way. Yes, we do. And it'll, it'll, it'll spread across America. It will. Californians always lead the way because we're the biggest and the best. Yes, we are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm here at the GMO labeling rally in Santa Barbara, California on September 22nd. 2012. This is Nicole Schoen speaking, and I have with us the entrepreneur from Ruthie's Remedies. This is Ruthie, and I want to talk to you about pet nutrition. It is imperative that all pet nutrition is non-GMO. We are scientifically proven that when the animals are fed GMO foods, they have serious health effects. And Ruthie is a perfect specimen of non-GMO foods. She's healthy, she doesn't have allergies, she doesn't have any problems at all. She's got perfect teeth. They're a little crooked, but they're perfect. And it's about conscious consumers looking at the packaging of our pet foods and making sure that they're getting organic, non-GMO foods. This is Ruthie's Remedies, and she's got three organic, natural pet supplements. One for arthritis, it's called arthritis. One for fleas, which is called red fleas, believe it or not. And one for a basic mineral, which is called pet mints. So read your labels and demand that your companies that you're buying your pet food from are non-GMO. What about pet food sold in the health food stores? You is that must, GMO? No, you must read your labels, and if it does not say non-GMO, it is not good. So call the company. Even if it says organic, it's not necessarily non-GMO. So we have to be really diligent consumers and demand that the labeling is on the food, otherwise we won't buy it. And we can't even trust our health food stores. No, you cannot trust anyone with your health. No. If you have a newborn child, are you going to trust a neighbor to give you advice? No. We need to be diligent with our labeling, with our reading the labels, and within what we buy, because that will determine the quality of the food. Well, are there any dog food? I'm very proud to be part of Santa Barbara, and we have one of the leading farmers markets on the west coast of America that specializes in organic fruits and vegetables. 
<laughs> it's a good rat. We well, do. That's perfect. We have a great one, but and how? So, yeah. And so now I think it would be great <laughs> that, that Santa Barbara City Council stress non-GMO in all the products that come into Santa Barbara. So if we can get the City Council to do a resolution. I think it would be wonderful. Let's try. Well, how are we going to get Kathy or somebody to introduce one? We can go out and come and talk. Let's go after them. Now I have a question. You've met the presidents you know, in the past. Now, Barack Obama's appointed Monsanto basically to be head of the FDA. Can you get through him? Too? I'm very, very sad about that one. Montana has an inside track to the White House, mm. and it's very sad. I'm yeah. sorry to so say I'm, well, I wish you anyway, but I'm, we're going to mm -hmm. do our best. Yeah, the so people, it's, it's, like, it's our pocketbook, very, very and we're the ones that buy the food. No, America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can do it all if we know. You know they and they put the truth. You know, yeah. It's very like strict. Radcliffe yeah. and Amino. Yeah. We so are what if we have non-GMO soybean certified. So it's very, it's very strict. Completely. And we demand and the other yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I wish we could you know, have you meet yeah. with Barack Obama. Okay, trying to get genetically modified organisms labeled so we all have the right to know what we're eating. And can you tell me who you are and how you feel about this? Yeah, my name is John the Lane. My father is Jack the Lane, the American uh, fitness guru pioneer. Um, yes, the GMOs, I know a lot about them. Uh, our family uh, tried to lobby against the banning of, of raw milk, and this carries over into the GMOs. They're using... Uh, pesticides uh, that are really 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 cancerous and what's happening is that they're spraying them on our vegetables and the vegetables are genetically modified so that they can withstand these chemicals and in essence the pesticides are going into our vegetables and are they getting out I don't think so we have a right to know what they're putting into our food and I'm a huge proponent of the disclosure to know that we have genetically modified food or we don't and here we're adding genes from other species into our corn and our soybeans. And what about the pot? We don't know the effects of messing up the whole genetic structure, right? Well, well Dad always says, uh, if man makes it, don't eat it. So if they're uh, splicing around with Mother Nature, yeah, we don't know uh, what the repercussions of this are going to be. So, uh, you know, maybe some more studies, maybe another 30 years would be nice. But they're giving it to us, and uh, we're, our bodies don't recognize some of these things. If 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 it's not in nature, then our bodies don't recognize it. It just can't be good for us. And if it's going to make someone more money at our expense, I'm not for it. And here they're putting bacteria into our corn, and viruses, and all kinds of weird foreign things without even telling us. And um, What's really scary to me is I go to health food stores and I expect to be, you know, buy healthy food. And I'm finding out that these companies at the health food stores, many of the companies have been bought out by the big companies like General Mills and they're actually lobbying to, uh, spending money to defeat our labeling measure. Right. We, we, we really do need some uh, government regulation. A lot of the restrictions uh, have been dropped in the last uh, 20 years that kept us safe, uh, even in consumer um, aspects. but. The thing is, we have a right to know what's in our food, and some of the commercials that I see say uh, a Kellogg's nutrition bar, and it says it's fiber, and it says it's healthy. It's got hydrogenation in it. It's got preservatives in it. It's not healthy for you. So in essence, they're just lying to you right on our television sets, and they get away with it. And also, if you notice, uh, zero trans fats. The law states that they can actually have 0.5% trans fats in our food but they can say it has zero trans fats. That's a lie. Well, who's running the Food and Drug Administration, the very companies that are supposed to be regulated? That's right. It's, it's, a, it's a web. I mean, what is fascism? Uh, when corporations run the government. Plain and simple. Mm. Well, let's see. Um, what about... Um, we can always edit this later. There was another question I had on my mind. What was it? It seemed important. Okay, in Hawaii, I understand there's a really big problem with Monsanto taking over, and the papayas, is it the papayas? 
I do believe it's the papayas, and uh, a lot of people are trying to fight it. Uh, if you look along the side of the road in Hawaii, they say no spray. And they don't want their product sprayed, and you know, I, apparently Monsanto is trying to get in there and spray people's products and push that GM, the genetically modified foods on farmers, and they're, fi they're fighting it <clears throat> tooth and nail. And um, there really shouldn't even be a fight. We should have a choice to eat genetically modified foods or organic. But we really shouldn't have a choice to eat genetically modified foods at all. Um, they shouldn't even be made as far as I'm concerned. We should just be growing vegetables out of the ground naturally uh, as Mother Nature intended us to, to uh, have it. Now, are you going to be real active in this issue in the coming time? I, I have so many issues that I'm <laughs> yes. trying to be involved in. Um, but yes, I would like to get involved in some way. I, I, uh, I, I, I try to eat as best I can, but if you're on the road traveling around, you're almost trapped because you want to get something quick to eat, but you really only have, let's put it this way, I don't eat at any corporate owned restaurants. I just don't. Because what they're doing is they're trying to up their profit margins at the expense of our health. And um, I, even if I sneak something that's not so good for you, at least I know that was made fresh. I'd rather eat some junk food that was made fresh from scratch than some of these genetically modified um, and you know corporate owned health food. Uh, let's see, bars or whatever. I don't know if I'm doing that right. Um, okay. What I want to say is that, uh, <clears throat> say Carl's Jr. has a chicken burger, right? <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. it's good for you. No, it's not, because we've got hormones in the chicken. Um, anywhere you pull over to eat now, you've got to worry about, we shouldn't have to worry about what's in our food at all. We shouldn't have to worry what's in our food. I have to go to a million different places. Well, oh, where do I pull over to eat? You know, I almost have to pack my own lunch uh, and, and it's just terrible. It's absolutely terrible. We all have to pack our own lunches. Well, under, yeah, yeah, pack under, your own lunches. Under Mahatma Gandhi, the people were like boycotting and they were poor and they just would bring their own rice or whatever and they they, they didn't go to work. They were even willing to die. It's, but, but we just need to really just not support this kind of thing. No, um, and it's, it's tough uh, because people are so busy and a lot of people trust. Um, I, I feel that our, our, our media is not... <laughs> 100% reliable uh, in some of the things they tell us, um, but uh, it, it really is a travesty that in, in a free, the most, let's, let's say we're the freest country apparently in the world, and here we are worried about if we're getting poisoned or not, worried about if our money's going to get stolen, worried about, it's not a good time. <laughs> it's just not a good time. Um, corruption's running rampant, isn't it not? And then poisoning our food with yeah. all of this this garbage and 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 dad dad didn't I mean, he he didn't even know about a lot of this stuff because he trusted you know corporations he trusted he was a trusting guy but you know what if dad ate an egg down the line and it's got the hormones it's got this that and the other in it uh like i said before we've got to worry about what we're eating for fear of being poisoned in our own country think about it Mm-hmm. And you're going to be carrying on the tradition of your father, educating people, helping people to become more healthy, right? I educate people just on a daily basis. I yammer about this stuff all the time. I try to tell people, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not perfect. You know, I don't, I don't eat as, as uh, I, I don't follow as strict of a regimen as my father, but I really do try to watch, and I watch on a different level. I read every ingredient that I put in my body, and. You know, when a package says zero trans fats and then you find out it has trans fats in it, that's a lie. I mean, it's almost like these corporations or, or the government's allowing corporations to lie to us. And that's just not, <laughs> it's just not noble. <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> well, we, our can the candidates who run are not grassroots candidates. No, but... they're, they're really not no. either. I'm, I'm a grassroots guy. I'm and, a very grassroots guy. And... I'm for our constitution. We have a beautiful document. I'm um, mm -hmm. a beautiful document that, that freed this nation, and it's this thick. But some other documents are this thick, and they enslaved the nation. <laughs> and what about, the about that one? <laughs> and they just passed the NDAA that says they can take any one of anybody away and hold them That's indefinitely a without trial. Dad's rolling over right now. I just I, yeah. I, I just can't believe that that uh, this is all going down. And I, I, I actually do spend most of my time uh, preaching about this sort of thing too. 
Well, we sure appreciate your educating the public. Now, at least there's one grassroots campaign going on right now to label genetically engineered food, which I believe is the most important thing on the ballot. I mean, it, it is um, huge on the ballot. We really... Uh, I mean, we really need, do need to make people aware of this, and we have a right to know what's in our food. If the FDA claims to be uh, in our benefit, they will label the food as such. Now we need to get everybody to get out there and vote. Yes, yes. So I'm a huge proponent of this. I'm glad to be glad to be a part of this. You know, we really do have a right to know, so we can make a choice. If you want to eat junk, you can eat it. But at least we know what we're eating. When we don't know what we're eating, that's dangerous. I mean, I don't know how much garbage I've put in my body uh, over the years thinking it was healthy and then finding out later that, you know, I've got genetically modified soybeans. I've been drinking Roundup. Roundup was made by Monsanto. Monsanto created Agent Orange, so we're putting Agent Orange into our system. That's that's cannot be good for you in any world. <laughs> Right? <laughs> and now we can't even go to the health food store and buy um, juices from yeah, Santa I mean, Cruz Organic. Yeah, if you can't trust um, your health food store for fear, you know, that's, we, we really do need to, to get awareness about that. Santa Cruz Organic is owned by, uh, by Smuckers and they're paying money to defeat the initiative. Well, so. our founding fathers told us, do, do not let these corporations take over. Do not let these corporations take over. I'm all for free enterprise. I'm all for making money. But there's a point where when our voting's done by these corporations, that's fascism. Well, they're and too, too powerful. It's mm. too, way too powerful. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we the people have a voice. That's where our country was founded on. Let's stay, let's stay with that platform. <laughs> well, John, we sure thank you for this wonderful well, interview and for your um, activism and concern for our country and our planet. Thank you so much. I, my wife can't say I didn't do anything about it now because I, I, I yammered in her ear more than anybody's. <laughs> She's sick of hearing about it. Well, the people united cannot be. Well, she, she now. Home. I mean, she mm. reading the labels, but she'll bring stuff home from the mm. grocery store, and I'll read the labels and I'll toss it in the in the trash. And like I said, I'm no saint when it comes. Like I'll go. I eat a pretty good diet, but then every once in a while I'll treat myself to something that tastes good. That's just not, you know, kosher, well, maybe like a hamburger, you know? I like an In-N-Out burger once in a while, right? But Dad says it's not what you do some of the time, it's what you do all the time. I thought he was a vegetarian. No, Dad, he ate meat. Oh. He ate meat. He was a vegetarian for, for a, a while. Oh. But uh, he, he ate fish, chicken, turkey, a little lamb, right? Oh. And there's nothing wrong with eating a little meat. It's a good source of protein. Um, you know, it's all good as long as it's natural. You know, as long as Mother Nature made it. That's what? the point. But here's. You have to kill the poor little creatures to get that. But you know, that's. Too. But those creatures kill each other too. So. Okay, but here's my question, John. After Fukushima, I understand there's a lot of radiation coming over in this whole hemisphere, and that when we eat meat, it's really getting much more concentrated because it's higher on the food chain as opposed to eating. Uh, right. Well, so what about our vegetables too? I mean, but, yeah, it's, but, it's fallen. It, the fallout's gone into our our ground. But so. but to get up one pound of beef or something, they have to eat like a hundred cows have to eat like a hundred pounds of grain. So I think you're getting it a lot more concentrated in the dairy and the and the meat. Right. Right. So right, right. it's probably a good idea, don't you I think, eat a to lot cut of fish down? Too, but then the fish is in the ocean, and yeah. the nuclear reactor was in the ocean. Yeah. So you know, I don't think there's any escaping this if you really think about it. <laughs> but really, there's really not. Uh, it's all over, and I think that uh, Chernobyl, uh, when that happened, look what, look what happened in the cancer rate. It spiked in the, in the 20 years. Do, do you agree? I'm asking, but uh, I mean, uh, all of the the nuclear fallout around us. They're blowing up these bombs, experimenting. They should have checked that one out first too. And uh, you know, if I'm not on film, I'll give my uh, my opinion on on uh, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki too. You want me to turn I don't think I don't, don't think those needed that. to be dropped. You want me to turn it off? That's okay. You can get it. Oh, um, because? Yeah, I don't think I don't. I, I think there was another alternative. Apparently, from the research I've done, yes, is that uh, Japan had somewhat surrendered. Yes, but we bombed them anyways, and mm -hmm. I, I kind of figure feel that uh, you know this country has been the aggressor of more wars than we think. Well, you're not the only one saying that, John. And first, for, if 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 Dad they, didn't like the wars, he, he's all for right. patriotism. I'm an American. Right. I love our way of right. life. I love. I love my country. Right. But I don't, I, I feel 
and, and I'm I'm a proponent of war when it's in self-defense, not when it's going and pushing our will on someone else who really doesn't want our way of life. Not everybody likes capitalism. Not everybody likes this lifestyle. So why push that on them? Let's do our thing. They do their thing. Any any therapist would tell you that. You know? Right. If you're into that, then you guys do this. If we're into this, we're going to do our thing. Don't impose anybody's will on anybody. Well, extreme capitalism and extreme communism extreme seem to me bad extremes. things. Extremes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And what was Jesus? Communism was a terrible thing, too. Well, and extreme capitalism is terrible. So, so yeah. Dan, Dan always said, in moderation, moderation. You well, know, it's just common sense. According to the founder of Christianity, who didn't call himself a Christian, we were supposed to all share and help each other. That yes, seems, to yes. me, that seems kind of communism, or at least living communally and everybody helping each other. Yes. Seems a better way of life, but true communism has never been practiced, apparently. So we've got two extremes. Right, we got two extremes. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> you know, things weren't too bad in the 80s. It was okay. Uh, we had a lot of uh, government regulation. Regulation is good in the right places. Right. And it's bad in the wrong places. You stick to the Constitution. <laughs> but there's ways of perverting it, of course. Right. Which goes back to the money. The, I mean, think about it. Money. I'm just, I've been studying this stuff for about six years now. And, and uh, you, you think about it, Congress is pretty much bought and paid for. And right. it's, it's no secret. And all I want back is the vote of the people. What's going to be popular? You know, what do we want? But our decisions are made for us. And like, like getting back to the GMOs, they're making my decision up for me that I have to eat this stuff? No, I don't want this. Nobody wants it, actually, because it's terrible for you. It's actually the, I mean, our own government's poisoning us. And dad was, I think, I think dad really was the first person to call him out. And, and Patricia's father, uh, Paul, was the first people to, to call this foul way back when, before it was, uh, uh, before it became popular. Right? Right, right. Well, you know, Patricia says, you know, God bless the world. So I think it's man's ego that is destroying the world. Yeah. And we, you know, if we're humble and we're good and we follow a, hopefully we don't, we're not motivated by fear with all these horrible things going on. But if we're all united and we're, we work together, and I think that there's some kind of spiritual basis here. I'm on Facebook then, and I, I see people on the Democrats and then I see the Republicans and yeah. they're all fighting. Yeah. And, and this is exactly what they want. They want to divide and conquer. And if we divide ourselves, how are we going to win? How are we going to win our freedom back if we're all divided? Right. You know, just like you said. Right. Well, that one. under Mahatma Gandhi, um, people were willing to give up their lives. And he said, if you lose your life, you'll go to a very good place. He said, we cannot fail if we're willing to um, um, get, uh, sacrifice everything. So if we work together, there's hope. Yeah. So, well, and and a, a lot, there uh, are people out there fighting for all sorts of things. That, I mean, a lot of this has to do, the GMO is just a, just a part of what's going on right now. And it's, uh, it's very indicative of, of what maybe certain, uh, maybe some libertarians are fighting for. And there's a guy named Gary Johnson running for president and he just wants to stick to the constitution. Okay. Um, and he's, he's liberal, but then he's conservative fiscally. That's a good, that's a happy medium, <laughs> you know, but, but one extreme to the other. It's, it's, uh, it's too much. Well, we sure appreciate this interview. Thank you. Yes, um, Yeah, let me say. But, okay, tell us who you are and how you feel about GMOs. Hello. Hello there. Hello to America. We have to stand up for our rights. I demand the label be on everything I buy that says non-GMO non-GMO certified the drag aminos certified non-GMO soybeans and that's what I want for the products that I buy and all of the wonderful companies that are in the health food movement in America they should join this GMO movement and demand the label be on their product non-GMO. Please demand that it be done. We 
We are going to vote in California. And it's going to be the leader in America. We will win. We demand. I'm fifth generation Cal Father Paul C. Bragg. He was the health pioneer. And C. Everett Koop, the Surgeon General, retired of the United States, said that my father Paul Bragg did more for the health of Americans than any one man he knew of. He started Rodell and organic gardening, no chemical sprays, fertilizers. Oh my golly, we don't want to eat a lot of chemicals. No. And that's why I demand no GMO foods in my body. I feel ageless and youthful. And I want you to, too. I want Americans to demand non-GMO food and get it on the label. Demand it. Demand it. Write all the companies and tell them you want it on the label. Thank you, and God bless America. Quite a lot of young people aren't willing to vote anymore. They're disillusioned. I'm we need them to vote on okay, this measure. Okay. Remember, every one of you, it's our right as Americans to vote. I've been voting all my life. I wouldn't miss it. When I'm on around the world, I do an absentee ballot. Yes. And I want every one of you to vote. I want your vote. And I want you to vote square and honest and read everything and know what you're voting for. And you're going to vote against GMO foods. You're going to demand labels on all the foods you buy. And write the company, young people, older people, all of you. I demand that you do that. I'm a health crusader, a Bragg health crusader, over 30 world crusades. I feel equally at home any place in the world. People ask me where I'm from. Listen, I'm a citizen of the world. And if America demands GMO labeling, the whole world will want it. And I thank each one. We all get out there and vote on Proposition 37. Yes, then demand it. Label. You want to know if it's GMO foods and do not buy them. Thank you, thank you. And I'm proud of each one of you taking a stand against GMO foods. I thank you. My father, Paul Bragg, originator of health food stores, started organic gardening and got Rodell in organic garden. We had nothing to do with GMO foods. Our Bragg liquid amino is certified non-GMO soybeans. And I want you all to stand up for your rights. Young people, older people, all of you. It's our right to what we eat to keep it as healthy as humanly possible. Thank you and God bless each one of you and get out there and vote against GMO foods. We demand it on the labels and write the companies and tell them no more GMO foods. Thank you and thank you and God bless America. Thank you, Patricia, very much. So. Tell me why you're here today, what your name is, and why, how you feel about genetically engineered food. Yes, my name's Nicole Shung. I'm the former editor and publisher of the California Sun newspaper. I published the paper in the middle 90s and went through 2001. And, it's, and I, at that time, was reporting on the genetic modification of food organisms and the horrific hazardous health effects that uh, can happen from this type of uh, molecular uh, tweaking of our DNA in our plants. Um, I'm here today at Farmer's Market in Ojai on September 2nd, 2012. We're, we're interviewing people on uh, the uh, awareness for genetically modified foods. Proposition, 13, uh, Proposition 37 is going to come up in the next November ballot, and I urge everyone to vote yes for the required labeling of the food. And you've been out here uh, volunteering quite a bit, to even to get this on the ballot in the beginning. Oh, yes. Yes, so we absolutely. Sure, we sure appreciate that your hard work on this issue. Well, it's my pleasure. We have to be informed. You know, and how they're mixing unrelated species together, splicing them together, 
and none of us know the side effects. So if this passes, yes, it's because of people like you. They are putting a f um, hopefully, uh, Dr. Chappelle will show up and he'll give you a whole uh, um, uh, scientific uh, molecular breakdown of what happens to the, the cells in the body when this kind of um, genetic tweaking of our DNA happens. Well, it's a, and they're mixing many other things together too, many unrelated species, animal, vegetable, bacteria, and none of us even have the right to know. What does that tell us about our government? What kind of government do we have? Well, it's a for-profit government. Yes. When they're in bed with Monsanto, this is what happens. And there, don't forget the BT, BT and, and the different uh, yeah. pesticides they're also splicing into the, the, the crops also. You know, you would think we, the American people, could do a little better and get better leaders if we would just get involved and support grassroots candidates. But we just seem to vote for Tweedledee or Tweedledum, whoever the corporations put on the platter in front of us. But there is no difference. There is none. There is no difference. And until we totally revamp the way government is done by getting the lobbyists out of Washington and getting the corporations out of Washington, then it's going to continue to be the same. So why would we expect it to be any different? Well, if it does change, it will be because of grassroots activists like yourself. Well, it can change if the people want it to change. Yes. We, you and I, can get out in the streets all day long, but unless the people mm. stop buying the products, we need to stop buying all genetically modified foods. That means we, we must stop all Roundup Monsanto products. So we need to do a big boycott. We, we have to be conscious consumers. And until we get to that level of buying, realizing our dollar creates the economy that we are supporting, then we have the people have the power. They just need to use it. And it we have one of our volunteers here who has spent much time and energy um, trying to, to help get this on the ballot, which we're now on the ballot in November. And can you tell me what your name is and what we can do about this? What's the solution to this problem that we have, we're facing with genetically engineered food? Uh, well, my name is Patty Pugling. I'm here in Ojai working with Transition to Organics, an organization uh, focusing on giving people information about how to get off chemicals and how important it is for our health and for the environment around us. And um, what we can do is just not buy anything that is uh, genetically modified or contains harmful chemicals. So the way to do that is to buy uh, local produce that you know is um, organic and um, as much as possible uh, look for labels that tell you that it's uh, not GMO, it's GMO free. Um, it's really what we buy is going to be our vote you know, when we are out there in the store just to make sure that we're reading the labels. Well, we need to get the American public behind this. In India under Mahatma Gandhi, the millions of people were willing to boycott, you know, and they were willing to give up even their lives. And so we just have to get the American people united behind this good effort. So here you, you've been educating the public about this. This is so important what you're doing. How are we going to really get the multitudes behind this, or are we starting to? Or uh -huh. Well, I, I think it's just um, individually we talk with our friends and neighbors and we get out there on the street like we're doing and talking with people as they walk by in front of the farmers markets. And uh, if, if we have enough money we could get more media attention and we're facing uh, a lot of opposition from the big uh, genetically engineering, uh, genetic engineering organizations. Um, so all we you, need yeah. to do is get like maybe a million yeah. people each donating twenty dollars, and oh, we'll okay, have money for our own grassroots campaign. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. If everyone will just contribute a little bit, that's what people don't realize. They think they can't do much; that they're powerless. But if fifty other countries can have. A, genetically modified food labeled so can we. It's just a no-brainer. We should have a choice. People should be informed. 
And what we're asking for is people to vote for Prop 37, yes on Prop 37, so that we can have a choice. And it's not stopping GMOs, it just means we have the right to know what we're eating. Pretty simple. Right. Well, thank you so much for this interview, Patty. I really appreciate your taking the time today. Tell me what your name is and how you feel about genetically engineered food. My name is Steve Sprinkle. I'm a certified organic farmer in Ojai, California, and I've been involved in the anti-GMO campaign since 1996. The Yes on Proposition 37 initiative asks voters to say yes whether or not they want genetically modified foods labeled at point of purchase. The reason why we think we want genetically modified foods labeled is because we don't feel the government has done its job in analyzing genetically modified foods with regard to implications on human health. They never did it. They never wanted to do it. They, these things have been in the food system for the last 20 years. And the reason why I'm in favor of it is that I have a lot of contact with consumers and I know they're vitally interested in that prospect. Well, um, so how, what, 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 what's the solution here? I mean, what's the best solution here to this big problem that we have? A united population voting for Proposition 37? What's your take on this? The, uh, the, the, the best prospect now is that people should go out and vote. They should register to vote. I talk with lots of young people especially who are completely disenchanted with the political system. They don't have to be young. I talk to people who are 27, 37, 57, 77, who don't like the political parties and they don't feel like there's anything in this for them by wasting their time going to register and to vote. However, this particular measure is at least one reason that's legitimate for someone who is otherwise disaffected to go out and register to vote because this is one vote for sanity in the marketplace. This is a consumer revolution. And this is really the big thing about genetically modified foods being labeled, is that um, just as in the organic farming movement when it began 40 years ago, it wasn't the government that started this. It wasn't a, a nonprofit organization who started it. It really wasn't even many farmers who started it. It was consumers. Consumers decided that they didn't trust the government, that they were tired of all their yada about chemicals. They knew that the chemical companies were running the, the, the regulators. They knew that the chemical companies had lobbyists and had control of Congress. And they knew that if they expected the government to protect their health, that they were expecting the wrong thing. And so consumers went out and they started buying organically produced foods because they wanted something that was grown without synthetic chemicals. So this was 40 years ago, the organic farming movement started. And it was a partnership between consumers and farmers. But we have to admit that it was consumers, more than anyone else, the consumers who built the organic farming movement. And now you fast forward to 2012 and you have the labeling GMO measure, the movement to label genetically modified foods. Hey Steve. Hi Brian. In point of purchase. And who started it? Who started this big thing? Who got 800,000 people to sign the petition? Who came up with the idea? Who paid the Secretary of State? Who paid all the money? Who bought all the postcards? Who bought all the bumper stickers? Who bought all the pamphlets? It wasn't the farmers. It wasn't all the, all the non-governmental agencies. It wasn't all the nonprofits. It wasn't any of the farmer organizations. It was consumers. It was Pam Larry and Stacy Malkin and a bunch of people in Santa Cruz who had this idea to put it on the ballot. About this time last year, they started working on it. And so they worked on it continuously all the way up and through till June when they delivered the petitions to the Secretary of State and we got 800,000 votes, got 800,000 signatures. Very difficult thing to do, 
to go out and get 800,000 people to stop and sign their name. It's really very, very hard. Okay, so now you have a consumer-based revolution once again. And where were all the farmer organizations? Now, in 2012, in 2012, you have lots and lots of non-governmental private public se public sector or rather private sector support. Where were they all? Nowhere. We didn't get any support from any of them. You got support from the Organic Consumers Association. You got support from the Food and Water Watch and from the Center for Food Safety, from the Cornucopia Institute. But if you look on the other side, go ahead and look at all the alternative agriculture organizations in California that might have done something. Go and look at their websites now. We're not going to mention them in by name because we don't want to criticize them by name. But if you go and you look at all the alternative agriculture organizations and you look at their websites, there's not a single presence on those websites in support of Proposition 37. So once again, consumers are doing the job, not the organization. It's up to the grassroots. The government's the grass not going to do it for us. They're not going to do it for us. It's That's up right. to us. You That's know, right. so what you're saying is very important. We need so to get every people, believer, you know, everyone who believes in this, should should become an emissary, an ambassador for sanity. They should go out and they should talk to people. They should talk to people and say, when the people say, let's talk about the four points, okay? The four arguments that the no on 37 people have. Argument number one: There's nothing different with genetically modified foods and genetic engineering in producing crops. We've been creating hybrids for years and years and years. We've been creating these things all along and then this is just a new thing that's no different from what we've done in the past. Well, actually it is. It's radically different. We've never crossed two different species. We've never put a bacterium, a bacillus, a disease in intentionally in a corn crop so that every cell in the corn contains the bacterium of that disease. We've never done that. Have we ever done that? No, we've never done anything like that, so eh, wrong. Second thing, oh, this is gonna be so expensive. This labeling measure is gonna be so expensive for consumers. It's gonna cost consumers two or three or four hundred dollars more per family per year if Proposition 37 wins. How ridiculous. can that be true? How could it How be true? How can that be true when General Mills, Coca-Cola, Mars, all the guys that are fighting it, you know, General Mills, Coca-Cola, Frito-Lay, Mars, Dagoba, they're all fighting it. They do nothing but spend money all day long creating new labels. They do nothing but create new labels. General Mills must have 14 people on the ninth floor and their only job is changing fonts and labels. What? They've got all the labels for the next 15 years in some warehouse in Gardena? What? Well, yeah, we all know they no. keep cha changing. It doesn't but this make is the argument that right. people, they're making. And so right. you have to argue each point they're making. It's so stupid. They think we're stupid. They have contempt for our intelligence or something as the American people, this right? This is what's going to happen yeah. on television. All right, what's Number the next three. one? Number three is that uh, the there's that this creates loopholes and there are certain um, products that have been granted exemptions in this. And so I don't know really why they wanted to bring this one up. They say that soy milk must be labeled, but dairy cattle milk doesn't have to be labeled. Okay, well that's a secondary product. And while we're at it, Monsanto, do you really want us to start talking about how almost all the dairy cattle, the hogs and the chickens, almost all of them, like 95% of all the livestock in the United States are fed genetically modified foods. Do you want people to start looking at all of the evidence that we do have of populations of hogs that have had spontaneous abortions in significant hog populations in Iowa, of, of cattle and hogs and chickens that don't gain weight, that don't continue to produce, that show lassitude in some kind of veterinary malaise. You want us to start talking about that? Why did you guys bring that up? Uh, you idiots. Uh, You're idiots. Uh, 
That's because the people they hired, these PR firms in Washington, Bursler and Marshaller, and these guys, they're just like bad garbage. Bad garbage, garbage in, garbage out. No, let's see. You got the three points. I thought you. I think you said four, didn't there you? Four. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if I can remember yeah. the fourth one. Okay. <laughs> and that. Um, and that. Um, the the science has proven that there's nothing wrong with genetically modified foods. Okay. Science has proven this. Who's science? It was never proven. Twenty-five years ago, when they introduced this stuff. The government colluded with the manufacturer and they said, we're just going to call this stuff substantially equivalent. And the reason why we did that is because the fox has been watching the hen house. Monsanto consistently puts members of their administrative executive team in positions of high regulatory authority at the EPA, the USDA, and the FDA. Who is the director of food safety at the Food and Drug Administration right now? Michael Taylor. Michael Taylor, a former Monsanto executive. What criminal. the? Come on. It's criminal. This is like there is this is this this conspiracy is hiding in plain sight. <laughs> Forget about the chemtrails. <laughs> but come on. This well, is a conspiracy that's hiding in plain sight. And they've gamed the government. They dare not say anything. It doesn't matter if it's Bill Clinton, George Bush, or Barack Obama. Barack Obama in 2007 said he would support the labeling of genetically modified foods. Mm -hmm. That went by the wayside. Of course. Who did he hire? Michael. Tom Vilsack. Mm. Yeah. Who's Who was he? voted? Who's he? he? Well, he's the former governor of Iowa, and from one from the Missouri River in Iowa all the way to the Mississippi and Illinois, all of Iowa is sprayed with Roundup mm. because almost all of Iowa is covered with genetically modified foods. They do nothing but, but grow GMO corn and soybeans in Iowa. Mm. Nothing but. It's, well, a toxic, it's a toxic, dirty world over there. They say we get the kind of government we deserve. So what does that tell us about our if consciousness? You don't go out and vote, if you don't go out and vote and you don't make an effort, then you can be led like hogs to the slaughter. And I'm having all kinds of people tell me that if I don't vote for Obama, I'm throwing away my vote. But he seems like he's a, a terrible man. I want to support grassroots. but. We're told that seems to be our only hope. Well, here. a lot of the, a lot of times you're left with choosing the lesser of two evils. Well, why is that? Because and so, yeah. and so I'll, I mean, as far as Obama goes, I mean, I'm going to badmouth him all day long, but I'm still going to vote for him, rather than the Republican Party. It's not, it's not really, it's not really um, the people. It's the organization. Well, why can't we, as the people? Because when you got, when you voted for George Bush, you didn't get George Bush. You got Dick Cheney. Well, if, if enough you vote of for Mitt Romney, you're going to get Karl Rove, and you're going to yeah. get all the idiocy that the Republican Party wants to put. Yeah, in. well, but if we the the people would get behind grassroots but candidates, like well, she's saying like Ron Paul or many of the others. If Is we that the, what's going to happen now? If we the people, you can make a showing now. If we the people, you would, can make a showing voting for an alternative candidate. We the people have the power to be united, but we're not united, so we just vote for whatever candidates the corporations put. Oh, we got to vote for this guy because That's the corporate. Exactly the, but and then, I think but we can do better than that. Up, something rises up out of the grassroots, like Proposition 37. Yes. And irrespective of all these idiotic choices that you're off, that you, that you feel like you're obligated to make. Yeah. Like voting for a county supervisor, it doesn't yeah. matter who's the county supervisor. It just doesn't matter. Yeah. The people yeah. who run. The county are at 800 Victoria, not yeah. the supervisor. Yeah. But the the uh, the um, the uh, uh, Proposition 37 offers you a distinct opportunity. Yes. Yes. So well, we, register to vote. Well, we sure and appreciate. Vote yes on 37. We sure appreciate this interview You're today. Welcome. Thank you so yes, much. I'm Steve Sprinkle. I'm the uh, board president of Cornucopia Institute and the uh, president of the Center for Regenerative Agriculture. And you own a restaurant as well, I own correct? I own, own the restaurant, Farmer and Cook. You don't sell, have Farmer any, and the cook. do you have any GMOs at all in no, your restaurant? I'm, Not I'm, a single I'm, one, I'm, right? I am an or all organic restaurant since 2000. Well, we need to boycott reason, yeah, all the other restaurants. Know, and the <laughs> reason why we were all organic is because of the GMO deal. Well, that's wonderful. Personally, I'm not supporting the, the other restaurants. I'll support restaurants like yours. Yeah. And I think we, the people, need to boycott under Mahatma Gandhi. 
they were willing to boycott and they had millions of people and look how powerful that was people didn't go to work they didn't pay their taxes they were willing to be arrested you know if people can be united in when, good causes when we discovered that all those guys i mentioned you're like let's just say uh, uh, uh general mills general mills owns cascadia so immediately oh my, my God. wife and I went and looked at the Cascadian stuff that we have in our shelves and we said, we're not buying it anymore. And uh, Smuckers, another donor to the No. no. 137, they own Santa Cruz natural juices and drinks. Oh my God. Others. We're going to clear it out of that. We got to so grow then, like four yeah. or five days after that, then Ronnie Cummings, who is the executive director of the Organic Consumers Association in Minnesota, he's calling for a boycott. It's time for a boycott of every one of those labels. And if you buy Dagova chocolate, you're supporting Hershey. If you buy Cascadian, you're supporting Arrowhead Mills. I mean, not Arrowhead, you put um, General Mills. General Mills. So, see, there's all, if you're supporting, if you buy Horizon, if you buy Horizon milk or eggs, you're supporting. Foods. Not to not to mention uh, animal cruelty as well. Um, what about um, um, uh, corn and stuff? Uh, corn seeds uh, for your garden. I uh, understand most of the seed companies are now owned. I think your uh, might be thanks. Most of the seed companies are now owned by um, the big um, Monsanto and other big corporations. Yeah. Can we still? Get, is there any uh, sources for getting the old time varieties that are so excellent? Well, um, they're still the, the seeds are still available through Seeds of Change. Oops. Owned by get... Mars Corporation. <laughs> oh, oh my, my God! Seeds of change. We're surrounded. We've been infiltrated. Oh my God! Seeds of change. There must, there Sold must be out. somewhere they, we can. Now, yeah. Now you see, they really did sell out. It's Stonyfield. Stonyfield. Omg, get out! Right. You're kidding me. Okay, but okay, another good, good company that hasn't come on board. Go to the Whole Foods website. Yeah. Ah. Whole Foods. Where are they at? Where are they on that on this? Man, they are in hush puppy lane. They don't want to talk about this at all. Why? Their store is full of it. The cattle be out of the bag. Whole Foods Market, full of genetically modified. So foods. how can we call these stores health food stores? <coughs> They're not. They're not health food stores. Well, Whole Foods store, I went there and they said, oh, you can collect signatures like two hours a week maximum. You know, that's what Whole Foods yeah. did. Or we're going to have you arrested. and. Whole Foods is very notorious for stopping democracy in front of their stores. And to me, that's the only democracy we have left in front of stores because how many of us can afford to get a spot on television? No. You know? But no, you might get two cents that this guy uh, is convinced belongs to him. I can sit out of in front of his store and play music, but nobody can give me money for it because that's his money. The guy that's selling reverse osmosis. There is no such thing. Osmosis is so, a little. Just, I'm gonna, let me cut this. So we'll go back stick with the one. It, we, I want to go back Sorry. to my stand. I just thought I'd mention. What that. about that new company out of Canada called Ca Ca Canada? You mean Cadia? Cadia. Cadia is the is the label of um, like United Natural Foods, isn't it? Like look it up. I mean, it's like it's like a whole label of the distributor. So how can we ever be assured if it says organic? You're that just gonna have to GMO. eat whole foods. We gotta, you yeah. can't buy any. You can't buy any processed products. We have to grow our own food. But organic yeah. doesn't mean it isn't GMO. Well, no. Like, I can't use any genetically modified seeds. If you buy a whole food product that is certified organic, it hasn't been contaminated with genetically modified foods. Mm -hmm. But all this other stuff, you have. You're really just whistling by the graveyard. You have no idea. So you have to, and and uh, so buying a a fresh whole food or even like popcorn, ground flour, cornmeal, dried fruit, I think you're probably going to be perfectly fine. You see, that's where you're, you're you're having to go back to the older way of doing things. You're actually going back to. Yeah. Oh, it didn't seem that bright, but it seemed to work. Processed foods. These convenience foods. So I better go back. Yeah, well, we appreciate Thanks your, your time. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.